What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're covering creative testing and the exact creative testing ad account structure that I use in my own ad accounts as well as all of my client ad accounts. So hopefully you get a ton of value out of today's video and hit that like and subscribe button. All right, so without further ado, let's dive into our ad account. Now, what you're gonna wanna do if you're first starting out is create a, uh, a sandbox, a greenhouse, a builder campaign. Where we're gonna store all of our ads um, from here on out, okay? We do this because we're able to store our ads for organizational purposes. So example, Black Friday comes up this year. I can refer back to last Black Friday. Maybe you sell stuff for Mother's Day. You can refer back to ads from last Mother's Day and pull those IDs or even use those exact same ads uh, again for this year if they performed well last year, all right? So what you're gonna wanna do is hit the Create button up top and we're gonna wanna create uh, a new campaign. Sorry, let's go to the campaign level. We're gonna create. We're gonna click on sales and then we're gonna hit continue. All right, I've already done this. So let's go on into the screen you're gonna be seeing right now, campaign level. We have our sales selected, our catalog is turned off, our advantage campaign budget or CBO is turned off. The ad set level, I like to name the ad sets by the quarter. Sometimes you can do it for the holidays, so call it Mother's Day 2023. We're just gonna go ahead and call this one Q1 and then 2023. We're gonna go ahead and select purchases for our conversion event. Nothing else matters on this page, all right? And what you wanna do is turn off the ad set. Again, we're only using this um, campaign. Let's name it real quick. We only wanna use the greenhouse campaign or sandbox campaign to build our ads and store them for future use. This never runs. So we can have the campaign turned on, but turning off the ad set will ensure that we don't get any spend across this. Again, we're only using this to build ads and store them for future use. And then at the ad level, we're gonna go ahead and give this a name. So I like to do ad number, uh, ad number, and then we're gonna do, can't type today, creative type. Then we'll do creative name, like, uh, I don't know, influencer in a swing with a banana. There's your creative name, right? Something that you can easily identify this ad without having to click and preview the ad. You know exactly what this is gonna be um, promoting, all right? So what we'll do next is let's do body copy or your primary text, and then we'll do our headline. So maybe you're doing free shipping, maybe you're using product names, maybe you're doing um, some other offer, the perfect gift for Valentine's Day. Whatever it is, you're gonna put that in the headline space. This is the text that goes beneath the creative if you're a noob. Um, no worries, we all started out somewhere. And then last but not least, we're gonna wanna do post ID. All right. So make sure your Facebook page is selected, your Instagram account is selected, our ad setup is um, in create ad. And we're gonna use single images here. I like to test all new creatives I test out are single images, unless they're carousel obviously, um, but just have manual se uh, setup here. Remove multi-advertising ads. We're gonna make this shop now. Destination, we're gonna go to our website. Now I strongly suggest um, running traffic to your product pages. Uh, whatever product's being shown in your actual creative, run into a product page. It just gets them to the add a cart button quicker instead of going to a collection page um, where they have the paradox of choice, they can't figure out what they want or maybe they can't find, uh, you have a lot of products, they can't find the exact product that they were looking at in the ad. Make it easy for them, send them directly to the product page of whatever uh, you know product they're showing in the creative. All right. Tracking, we're good here. Now, URL parameters. If you're using something like Triple Whale, Hyro, Segmetrics, Wicked Reports, you're gonna wanna put in your URL parameters down here. So I'm just gonna put like, uh, where should I put here? It's, uh, I'll just leave that for now as a placeholder. Um, and once we do that, we're gonna use the same primary text and headline for all of these ads, right? If you are running them to the same product, use the same headline. If it's a different product, we're just gonna put your generic product name here as a starter, okay? So let's say, for example, we're running uh, ads to a product that's like a, a turtle crew neck or a loggerhead turtle crew neck, okay? So I would just do uh, loggerhead crew neck, right? That could be one. It could be save the turtles. It could be limited edition if you wanna add some scarcity to this. All right, as far as the primary text goes, now 
it's important to note that the algorithm will target uh, based off of your actual creative itself, your ad itself. So that's the primary text, the headline, and then whatever creative image that you're using in the ad. So it's super important to do call outs here. So if we say limited edition, save the turtles crew neck, Facebook is gonna read this text and say, we need to tar target turtle lovers, okay? Again, in the primary text, do you love turtles? Good way to call people out, right? The algorithm, once again, will read this and find people who love turtles or attention all turtle lovers. So depending on who your ideal avatar is, who your customer is, call them out here. Dungeons and Dragons fans, um, uh, Stranger Things fanatics, whatever it might be, insert those keywords of who your avatar is into the primary text, the headline, and then in the creative itself so that Facebook knows exactly who this is for. And this is how you will get extremely, extremely good results using broad campaigns, all right, or broad targeting. So broad targeting is just targeting age, sex, and location. Uh, location only really, I like to use country. Um, don't mix you know, different countries together. If you are a local business trying to drive traffic to your, um, to your brick and mortar store, then you can do state, county, city, whatever it might be. Uh, but for most purposes, we're selling to the U.S. market, so target U.S. only, and then the uh, uh, sex or, or gender, um, and then age bracket. So if you're selling like a fidget spinner, probably don't target. If you're targeting parents, great, you're going to buy it for your kids. But really try to figure out who your you know core core uh, offer is for, um, and you know male, female, and then 25 to 44, or is it 65 and up? If you're selling like hearing aids or something like that, all right. Or if you're selling T-shirts to say I love my grandson, you're going to want to target probably 50 and up, 55 and up, something like that. All right. So with our primary text in place, our headline in place, uh, we have our URL parameters down here. What we're going to do next is duplicate this out. Now in this video, I'm going to show you an example of me building out four ads. So I'm just going to duplicate this four times. With these duplicates, I'm going to get rid of that little tag on the end. This is copy. All right, now let's just work our way down. These are all going to be image ads, so I'm going to go ahead and change this now as well. So if you're using, example, videos, this would say video. If you're using GIF, it'll say GIF. If you're using carousel, it'll say carousel, and so on and so forth. These are all going to be images for the purpose of this video. Save the draft. Edit one more time. Edit each ad, and I'm going to name them now. So instead of the number sign, we'll do 1001. I like to use uh, four digits here. This just makes it a lot easier when you're looking at the reporting of it. If you want to you know, rep uh, organize it by the name, uh, it'll go number-wise, so you can really easily keep track of what's getting sales and what's not. Easy to identify. All right, last one. Cool. Save those to draft. Now, starting with your top-down, we're just going to go ahead and select our media. So add image. The name is uh, add 1004, so this is going to be creative 4. Now, it's super important here to do original only. You want to use, well, at least for myself, I always use a 1-1 one, one ratio, 1080 by 1080, just for this period of the three-day creative test. Um, if something is working really, really well with a 1-to-1 one -one ratio and I want to move it into another campaign, then I'll start editing for certain placements. So, for example, I'll use something like this. It fills the entire screen for stories and reels. Um, but for testing purposes, I just do 10... Uh, 1080 by 1080, one-to-one -one ratio across all platforms. I'll show you why in a second as well. So let's just work our way down. Add media. This is creative one. This is creative three. Let's go to two. Now for the next one, just to give you guys an example, uh, what happens if you don't uh, select the same aspect ratio for all the creatives? There's five. So I'm going to leave these two on the uh, recommended placements here that are not one-to-one -one ratio, just to show you something that happens when we're trying to find the post IDs. All right. So next, hit done. All right, I'm gonna leave these as it is right now, but you'll know in the future with your naming conventions just to change these out to creative name. Something, again, that you can easily identify what creative this is without having to click on the preview button. All right, so we're gonna highlight all of these and then we're gonna publish. All 
no editing in today's video. We're getting this live to you on March 1st. This will be published on March 1st. Um, just to try to drive as much you know value as possible as soon as possible. All right, now from this point, I like to hit refresh on the browser. So let's go ahead and do that now. And then starting from the top to bottom, uh, we'll just work through. Now, when you're trying to find your post ID, you can either do it from this screen by clicking on share and then Facebook post with comments. But for you know, as for doing it a lot quicker, I like to go like this. So I either do it from this screen, click on a little edit name, then preview right here, share Facebook post with comments. <clears throat> All right, so now you'll see after post, you'll see this slug PF bid zero and then a big chain of numbers and letters. We're gonna copy this, close this tab, and then just paste it. So do this for all the creatives. If you're not this quick, don't worry. I do this too much. <laughs> um, so once we get them all in there, I'm gonna do creative number five last just to show you an example of what happens if you don't use the same ratio across all placements. So preview, share, Facebook post, or comments. Now in this URL slug, make sure you guys can see it up here. Yeah, you'll see. So you'll see up here it says DCO-add-ID. If I copy and paste this, it won't be the post ID. This is actually a dynamic creative, meaning it's dynamic in that each different placement is different for feeds, reels, and then um, the sidebar placement, right? So what we wanna do in this scenario is to get the PF bid uh, we need to click on this right here. Now, because I just published these, it'll say one minute. This could say the date and time. It could just say the date. If you click on this little one minute right here, you'll notice that the URL changes. This covers the whole uh, the whole screen now as well. And you'll see that the PF bid now uh, is presented to us, okay? So we'll just double click on that, copy it, back into Ads Manager, paste the last one. Save to draft. Once these are all done, we'll go ahead and review and publish. All right, perfect. Now the next step, now that we have all of our ads in a nice centralized location, it's in our greenhouse, we wanna do is create our new creative testing campaign. All right, so again, green button, click on create. This is gonna be a sales campaign, a campaign objective. What we wanna do is we're gonna skip the ad. So we're gonna name this one creative testing. And then whatever the audience is, so I like to do broad, let's do uh, male and then 35 and up. So again, this is broad targeting here. And then what I'd like to end up with is our start date. So we'll do 03.02.2023. Now you'll see today is the 1st of March. I'm actually setting this to launch tomorrow. We do this because every single ad when you hit publish has to go through, um, has to go through the I'm blanking here, uh, it has to get approved, right? The approval process. Now, some ads will get approved right away. Some might take a few hours. Some can even take a few days. So if we're trying to run a test and compare apples to apples, we need to make sure that all these ads started on the same date at the same time, got the same amount of budget. Otherwise, um, the data is really not one and one to compare, okay? So as far as the ad set goes, we're gonna name this whatever we're targeting. So in this case, it's broad, male, 35, plus and we're going to skip the ad once again click on continue we're going to do a manual sales campaign here again we can get into advantage shopping campaign in a future date but right now we want to control all variables we want to test the manual sales campaign uh, only click on continue all right so again we're going to want to make sure this is an abo campaign meaning ad set budget optimization so all the ad sets have their own budget and we do not want our ad advantage campaign budget plus turned on so make sure this is turned off still we're going to go into the ad set level website make sure your pixel is selected conversion event we're going for purchases right away now our budget is the first uh, important metric here okay so what I like to do is take your AOV divide it by three and then start, start that as your starting budget, okay? So if you're, let's say your AOV is $75, we're gonna start every ad off at 
$25 to spend $25 a day for three days, equaling our AOV at the end of day three. All right. If your budget was, or your AOV is 45, start these off at $15 a day. Okay. So we're just going to go 25 here for this example. Start date. Very, very important. Do not start ads today. Start them tomorrow. Okay. So I'm going to select tomorrow's date. And then as far as the time goes, you know, honestly, some people do midnight, some people do 3 a.m., some people do 4 a.m. Um, I find it best practice between 3 and 6 a.m. is your starting point. So set this up for, let's say, 5 a.m. And what this does is if there's any like early morning shoppers uh, on Facebook, you don't want to blow out your entire budget to people that are online killing time. Um, I like to start like early in the morning. Don't get that overnight yet um, as far as overnight buyers go. Uh, and, and make sure the make sure that the budget is set accordingly to spend between 5 a.m. and beyond. So 5 a.m. here. Now, as far as audiences go, what I like to do for creative testing is exclude purchasers of the past 30 days. So you can do this by either a pixel event or maybe you're syncing Clavio or an email list, excluding purchases the last 30 days um, in these creative tests, just to make sure these ads aren't being shown to anyone who's like purchased in the last 30 days, essentially. Um, it's, it's showing it to a cold audience. That's what we really want to see here. We want to see how these ads perform to a cold audience, people who don't know who our brand is. Um, some people exclude Instagram engagers, website visitors, uh, their email newsletter signups, uh, uh, video views, uh, Facebook page engagers, things like that. You can do that, but now in this kind of broad world, uh, broad really works best without limitation. So I like to test these with only uh, excluding our past purchasers of 30 days. So go ahead and select that down here. And then as far as our age, we said we're targeting males 35 and up. So let's select 35 to 65 and up. And then genders, click on this, men, no detailed targeting, okay? All of our targeting is done at the ad level. So if we're using keywords and we're using good creative, Facebook will read skin complexion, gender, um, whether you're, someone's working on a fitness equipment, right? They'll, they'll understand and break down your creative and target accordingly into a broad audience, okay? This, uh, if, you're, if you figure out winners in broad uh, targeting, these will generally last way longer because you're targeting everybody. Whereas if you're using interest, you're really constrained by the size of that audience. So I always test broad, only targeting uh, age and gender and location. So we're also going to say, you know, US only. So we don't need to adjust anything here. It says right here, locations, United States only. Advantage plus is fine. Conversions, we're all good down here. All right. Now with our ad set all set up, now we're gonna go back into our greenhouse campaign and we're gonna grab those five ads that we created. Select all of them, control C, or you can hit edit and then, oh, sorry, copy down here from the clipboard. I like to use the you know, keyboard, control C, you'll get confirmation down here, you copied five ads. Now we're gonna go back into our creative testing campaign. We're gonna select our first ad set and control V. Okay, now, with all of these ads still selected as it stands right now, what we're gonna do is scroll down to the bottom, take your URL parameters, copy them, go all the way back up. Now right here for ad setup, we're gonna change this to use existing post. Now again, the reason why we do this is all the winners from creative testing are gonna get likes, comments, shares. That's called social proof. We want that social proof to maintain on those ads no matter where we place them, in a dynamic or in a, uh, in a CBO, and maybe we're scaling in an, uh, an ABO, um, campaign or ad set, we want to make sure that all that social proof stays on these ads no matter where we place them. Okay. Again, if, if I'm testing, let's say Mother's Day is coming up and I have some Mother's Day ads from last year that worked really well and I can still sell that same product this year, we can keep those ads from last year that probably have hundreds, if not thousands, of comments, likes, shares, reactions on them for this year, getting a jump on finding new winning creative for this season. So I strongly recommend doing this always um, and having those post IDs. Okay. So what we're going to do is paste down your URL parameters because this, this box does erase once you change over um, the ad setup from create ad to existing post. Scroll all the way down to the bottom, paste in our URL parameters. Again, this is just a dummy one. At the bare minimum, use the Google Analytics one. We're gonna scroll back up. Now we're gonna select the top ad. And then in our ad name, we have our post IDs. You'll see that Facebook translated that PF bid, a bunch of stuff into a nice post ID here. So we're gonna just double click this, copy it, and then right under here, this, I don't know why they hide it, but enter post ID. We're gonna click on that, paste in our post IDs, and submit. <clears throat> now, you wanna make sure, 
create a four, create a four, right? Uh, the body will be there. The headline will be there. So we want to make sure, just give you a double check, that in this preview, we're seeing what our ad name says. Otherwise, you might have the wrong post ID. So this is just a way to double check uh, your work here. So we're going to go ahead and do all these quickly, just copying the post ID and pasting them, clicking on Submit. Next one. Copy, paste. Copy, paste, copy, and paste. All right, now these are all done. So one thing I want to do is clean this up a little bit. You see at the end, they add a little slug dash copy. So we'll select all these, click on find and replace, replace copy. Now they're nice and clean. Now. We want to run one creative per ad set. So because we have five ads here, we need five ad sets. So what I like to do, um, you could individually copy and paste them over and change the post IDs, but the quickest way I found possible is to load them all into one ad set, do your uh, create ad, use existing post conversion, enter the post IDs, and then duplicate this out as many times as how many ads you have. So we already have one ad set here. We have five total ads. We want to duplicate this four times. All right, let's go ahead and remove that copy. Now we're gonna select all these ad sets, click on edit. Now on the top here, you'll see five ad sets. If you click on 25 ads, it's gonna select all these automatically, okay? So you see how they're highlighted in blue? All of our ads and every ad set across all five ad sets are selected now. So what I like to do is deselect now going uh, in numerical order. So I'll start with zero, one, two, three, four, and five. And I'm deselecting by holding the command key on a Mac um, and then just deselecting them. So now you'll see top right, we only have 20 ads selected. We're gonna hit control delete on a Mac or control backspace on a Windows to delete these extra ads. Select all, edit one more time. And now you'll see we have five ad sets. Each ad set has its own ad. So what I like to do now is select each one of these individually and add the ad number to the actual ad set itself. So this is 1001. This is 1002. Hopefully this isn't too boring for you. All right, so you'll see here, let's go back and select all these. We're starting these tomorrow at 5 a.m. with a $25 budget. Again, budget is set by your AOV divided by three. You wanna be able to get one sale that breaks even or almost breaks even uh, in the three-day testing period. Make sure this is all still good. <clears throat> Great. Now the last step is I like to duplicate these ads out. So you can click duplicate up here or hit control D on your keyboard. Now we have two ads in each ad set. And essentially what this does is Facebook will spend the daily budget across two different ads. Well, they're the same ad, but two different ads in the eyes of Facebook, right? We're still getting the same engagement and social proof on these, but it's essentially finding a different pocket of that audience. So if it's competing against one another, this, uh, these ads might be, be shown to a small pocket of the audience. These ads will be shown to another pocket and it'll find you know a winning pocket of the overall broad audience. So. Generally speaking, after three days of testing, if maybe one has like a 4X row ads and one has a one, uh, one has a zero, zero, that's a bad, right? But you'll see that some, when creative is really, really performing well, it both of these ads will work well. So you'll see like a 3X row ads and a 3.5, a 5X row ads and a 6X row ads, right? Those are your real winning creatives because they work in two pockets of the same broad audience. So I'll do another video on that in the future, but just so you know, two ads per ad set, each ad set gets its own creative and then a duplicate of itself, all right? Now for reporting purposes, we wanna go ahead and now keep copy on the end of these just so we can defer which ad actually got the sale when we're looking at Google Analytics, Triple Whale, Segmetrics, Hyros, et cetera, all right? Now, once you publish these ads, so go back here, select all of these, do one last check, okay? So at the ad level, we have all of our post IDs here. We have our, uh, our tracking set up properly. Our URL parameters are in place. Again, at the very minimum, use the Google Analytics tracking parameters. 
at the ad set level, we're, uh, conversion locations or website. We have our proper pixel selected. Our conversion event is purchase. The dynamic is turned off. Our daily budget is proper. Our starting date is proper. Our location's good. Just again, doing double checking here, make sure everything is set up properly. And then our campaign, again, sales, no catalogs, and advantage campaign budget is turned off. Again, because we want each one of these ad sets to start at the same time, get the same amount of spend, so spending in the same uh, spending in the same audience, right? We're not targeting a bunch of interests here. We're targeting one specific uh, uh, broad uh, targeting. And then once we're all good, we're gonna go ahead and select the ads again and click on publish. All right, so because these ads are launching on March 2nd, they're all published now, right? I'm gonna turn them off. You leave them turned on. I don't wanna run these ads. They don't mean anything. They're not going to website that's open anymore. So we're gonna turn these off on my end, but you keep these up and running. Um, and now let's dive into the iPad. All right, so what do we learn? My handwriting is terrible, my apologies. But creative testing, okay? We wanna have one campaign for creating ads and then one new campaign for creative testing. All right, so our start date is tomorrow between 4 and 6 a.m. All right. Our budget is AOV divided by 3. That's our starting daily budget. And then as far as the testing period, you want these to run for 3 to 5 days. Now, I don't want you going in ads manager, hitting refresh every five seconds. I don't want you to do that. I want you to wait a full three days, 72 hours to look back at these ads. Now, what you're looking for is either if you're a newbie, you're probably focusing on ROAS. And if you're a veteran who understands the metrics, you're looking at your cost per acquisition. You have benchmarks for each one. So say you discover your break-even ROAS is a 2.6. Great, kill everything that doesn't have uh, a 2.6 or higher for ROAS. If you are looking at CPA as your benchmark keep or kill um, metric, you're gonna wanna say, um, let's say it's 20 bucks for example, you're gonna wanna kill anything that has a acquisition cost that's over $20. Now again, these are gonna be your numbers and it's, it's different for all accounts, okay? So whether you're looking at the CPA, the NCAC, new customer acquisition cost, um, you know, again, if we're not hitting benchmark numbers, we're gonna kill those ads. Um, what anything to wrap up here? So testing period, three to five days, let them run, kill anything beneath KPI or above KPI, depending on how you look at it, and let them run for three days. Now in the next video, I'm gonna show you what to do with winning creatives and how to continue creative testing um, through creative testing uh, as far as primary text goes, changing out headlines, maybe even changing where we're sending the traffic to. Uh, let's try a collection page. Let's try sending them to product pages. Never send them to your home page. You do not want to do that. It's too many steps to get to an added cart button in that phase. Um, but yeah, that's going to cover today's video. If you did get value out of today's video, please like and subscribe to the channel. You know we're living in an algorithmic world and it does go a long way to get views on this kind of content I'm creating for you. Um, if you have any questions on what we covered in today's video, anything I did not get into, please leave some comments down below and I will get to those as quickly as possible. I want to see you guys win guys and gals. I want to see you win, um, and really wrangle in the beast that is Facebook ads. It's not that complicated. It's all about testing different variables at specific times. We have apples to apples testing here. We're not testing, you know, uh, 17 things at once. We're testing creative first. Then we move on into primary and headline, uh, text, uh, placements, things like that. All right. So again, Thank you for watching this video and spending the time here with me on this channel. If you dig your value, hit like and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next video. Peace.